Sweden is frequently ranked as one of the best, if not the best countries to live in based on things like overall happiness, productivity, health and overall quality of life. Now much of this is due to things that are bigger than just the individual. You know, we have amazing parental leave, free education, among other things, clean tap water and the best pizza in the world, and yes, I have been to Italy. With that being said, I do also realize that no place in the world is perfect, Sweden isn't perfect, Swedes are not perfectly happy or healthy, there are plenty of problems here as well. But now I'm not here to talk about, you know, the macro things. I want to look at the individual and the habits and the rituals that I personally think might contribute to some of those statistics because you guys are from all over the world and I want you to feel inspired by the end of this conversation to feel like you can apply these things to your own life no matter where you live. Och först tänkte jag så här, okej det här är den perfekta videon att göra på svenska för att jag vill göra min på svenska så länge nu men alltså det känns så konstigt, jag vet inte varför. Så vi kör på engelska Se till om du har med på svenska i framtiden. Now some background in case you are new. I'm Swedish, born here, raised here, have lived in Stockholm for almost my entire life, lived in the US for two years. All right, let's dive into some of the habits, rituals that I think contribute to the statistics on the individual level. Productivity. Sweden ranks as one of the most productive countries in the world. As for how productivity is being defined and measured in this context, I can leave a link to an article for you for further reading if you are interested. It's kind of a long article, one that I am not personally super interested in, although I am interested in the key takeaway, so I just use short form's AI tool to quickly summarize it. Oh, you didn't know? Yeah, you can do that and a lot more with short form our sponsor for today's video. If you're not familiar, Shortform offers book summaries, but on steroids, because you can do a lot more than simply looking up book summaries. As I mentioned, for example, you can use their AI tool to quickly generate high quality summaries of articles, emails, blogs, and even YouTube videos. Now, personally, I enjoy reading, you know, entire books from beginning to end most of the time. However, I don't really like focusing on taking notes while reading and or thinking too hard about, you know, what the key points are. And so once I have finished the book, I like going to short form to sort of get a comprehensive overview of what I've read. And that way I also remember it better. I also like doing that because within short form, when you go and look up a book, within the book summary, they add insights to certain parts. And this is genuinely one of my favorite features. So for example, since we are on the topic of productivity, I recently read Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal, and then I went to look it up on short form. And here, let's see, so Abdal's final type of burnout, mismatch, happens when your work does not line up with your interests and principles. And then short form has added a little insight to that, and I'll just read the first sentence. Abdal's advice to match what you do with what you want closely resembles the concept of ikigai, a Japanese word that roughly translates to life's purpose. I think that's really cool and this is what I mean when I say that it's more than just a summary platform, like you're literally learning more things and being introduced to new concepts and ideas too. And the final reason for why I really like short form that I would like to highlight here even though there is more and you should definitely check them out for yourself, is that you can simply use it for inspiration. So sometimes I'll be like, hmm, I want to read a book on the topic of communication. And so I can simply go to short form, pick the category, and many of the most popular books will pop up. And so I may randomly pick one, start reading the summary, and then I'll kind of get an idea of what the book is about and if I think I will enjoy it. And if I do, I'll go and buy the book. Now you can go to shortform.com slash Lana to try it out for free and to get a 20% discount on your annual subscription. Thank you again so much to short form. Motion or vardagsmotion very much encouraged here in Sweden. It must come from the word motion and it means regular physical activity to maintain your health and bodily functions. Basically staying physically active, but it doesn't need to be high intensity like lifting weights at the gym, but rather even low intensity things like walking or doing work in the garden all counts as motion. You guys know that I love my walks. Exploring on foot is how I make sense of things. I want to feel the air, I want to smell the different places. That's why when I'm riding a car, I always like opening the window because I'm like, what does this place smell like? So I'll always walk if I can, unless 
unless it's too humid outside because by the time that I get to my destination, my hair is going to be an absolute mess. And if my hair is a mess, I will be in a bad mood and I would rather have good hair. And speaking of walking, this is one of the things that I, it was a bit of a culture shock when I lived in LA in the US because there weren't nearly as many people on the streets as there were people in cars, not even in popular places like Rodeo Drive or even Beverly Hills. I mean, that is in Beverly Hills, but you know what I mean. I come to think of this one instance that <laughs> truly shocked me. So let me share a little story. So I was living near a campus at UCLA and I wanted to get to Beverly Hills. And so I thought, okay, I'll just walk there. I think it was like an hour and 45 minutes to walk or something like that. On one hand, that walk was lovely. You know, obviously you have the amazing LA weather, the beautiful palm trees. On the other hand, I barely saw any other people on that entire Walk. The streets were so empty, there were tons of cars, but no people. And I even remember feeling strange being the only one walking on the streets, everyone in cars. I was like, are people looking at me thinking that I'm lost or that I'm a weirdo? Anyway, let's not make this conversation about LA versus Stockholm. I think the point here is just that if your city allows it, if you can, walk more. Get all the matum that you can get. Lagom. The Swedish concept of lagom roughly translates to not too little, not too much, just right. There's actually a couple books on this concept. One is called Lagom. It's written by Linnea Dunn. I read it recently and it was quite fun. I cannot tell you how often I will speak to an English speaking person and they'll ask me a question or say something and I'm trying to find the word to describe lagom in English. Because I want to say not too little, not too much, but who says that? No one really uses that phrase in English. And that's where logom is the perfect word. Like when someone asks, how much milk do you want in your coffee? You say logom. When someone says, oh, how far is the walk to that restaurant? And you're like, it's just logom. Like it's not too far. It's not super close either. Or someone says, how much cheese do you want on your pasta? And you want to say logom. I want a satisfactory amount, not too little, not too much. And I think it's a cozy word too, like being log on tired is nice, you know, like you're a little bit tired, you're starting to feel your body kind of getting a bit heavy. You're also not too tired, you can still watch a movie and eat a snack and get cozy. And I think anyone can embrace logom to have a little bit more logom in your life, whether that is in your home or how much you choose to socialize or how much you work, how much you go out, how healthy you eat. Anything that is logom is just the perfect amount. Fika. Did you know that Swedes are in the top three of the biggest coffee consumers in the world? Personally, I am not at all a genuine coffee drinker. I'll have about one espresso shot and the rest has to be milk. But that's besides the point. Fika is basically when you take a break from doing by having a small bite, usually something sweet like a piece of cake and a coffee. Now you might listen to this and think, okay, so fika basically means a coffee break. Yeah, but no, it's more than a coffee break. It's not even about the coffee really. It's about taking a moment or an hour or longer to pause, to relax, to connect with yourself, your loved ones, with a colleague or a book. Fika is oftentimes how we socialize here. It is perfectly acceptable to ask someone out on some fika or to meet up a friend over some fika that you haven't seen in a long time or even taking a fika pause at work. Fika is a love language all Swedes understand. It's about unplugging, disconnecting, being present and coffee. I mean, it's, it's about the coffee too. We don't wear shoes inside. Can someone straighten this out for me? Do Americans wear shoes to bed? And if they don't, why do they wear shoes to bed in all the movies and commercials and such? Please, if you're an American, help us all understand. Nixon, the art of doing nothing. I actually recently learned that there is a Danish concept or word, Nixon. It is the Dutch lifestyle concept of doing nothing. Now here's what this article said that I found. Practicing Nixon could be as simple as just hanging around, looking at your surroundings or listening to music. As long as it's without purpose, 
and not done in order to achieve something or to be productive. Think simply sitting in a chair or looking out the window. Whereas mindfulness is about being present in the moment, Nixon is more about carving out time to just be, even letting your mind wander off rather than focusing on the details of an action. I love this. This is one of my new favorite words. It feels very scandy and I think we can all use a bit more Nixon in our lives. Traditions. When I think of Sweden, I think of a place where people want to find reasons to celebrate life. And they do. There's a lot of traditions, a lot of holidays. We have Midsummer, we have Valborg, and a ton of other little holidays. And then we have all the days where we celebrate different foods and pastries, like the day of the cinnamon bun, which is when people will meet up with a friend or someone and stand in long lines to all the cafes to get a cinnamon bun. And where most workplaces offer their employees cinnamon buns. Similarly, we have the day of the semla and we have kreftskiva, uh, which is, I think, crayfish in English, which is when you throw a party or attend a party once a year and just eat crayfish. And there's a long list of celebrations that take place each year here in Sweden. And I love that. I think traditions create togetherness. And I think no matter where you are in the world, you can absolutely find reasons to celebrate life. And I think Swedes prove that it can be something small, simple, even seemingly silly, like celebrating cinnamon buns. <laughs>